OK, uh, so we are going to find. The uh, shear stress at point A. And the shear stress at point B. And I've made the fire rule smaller a bit so that we can refer it anytime when I'm doing it. OK. So the, the thing about this question is. We it is not given to us where an N is. Okay, it's not given to us. So before I, I go on, the formula that we are going to apply, okay, the formula we are going to apply is shear is equal to Vy over Izz Qz divided by T. So this is the formula that we are going to apply. Okay. So the first thing that we don't know is what is Vy. Okay. And not just what is Vy, where is this distance and n? Okay. It is not given to us, or is it important to know? We don't know yet. Okay. So let, let, let me uh, drop the transformation first. So this is our X. We have our Y. And then you have the rotation about Z. And because that's our cross-sectional view, this will be our Y. And this will be our Z. And this will be our rotation about X. Okay. So we need to determine what is our Vy first. Okay, before we go that, I'm going to write down what are the steps required. Okay, so first we need to draw the free body diagram. Right, we need to sketch the shear force diagram. Or before sketch, we need to find that the reactions at point A and at point B. Then we have to sketch the shear force diagram. Then after that, we have to uh, determine to determine the first moment of area at point A and uh, sorry the A is small a now okay point A and point B and then I'm going to do something more okay we are going to also find okay the shear stress distribution equation. Okay. So let's find the reaction or draw the free body diagram first. Okay, we are we're going to sketch the free body diagram. So from the diagram over there, we know that we have so this is our free body diagram, FBD. And this over here, we have a load coming down that is 180 kilonewton. Then we have AY, and then we have BY. Okay, 
And we know that based on, uh, I can write this here, uh, based on symmetrical loading and geometry right a y is equal to b y okay then we are going to apply uh, static analysis Right, we're going to apply static analysis, some mention about forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So you have ay plus by by minus by 180 times 10 to the power 3 is equal to zero. Now knowing that ay is equal to by, we know that 2ay Right, because a y is equal to b y is equal to one hundred eighty times ten to power three. A y is equal to ninety times ten to power three newton, and so that is is equal to b y. Okay, so now if we were to sketch our shear force diagram, okay. so from here, this is our x. And then from here, this is our V, right? So this is our point A. Over here, a certain distance away, this is our point B, right? So we have 90 pushing up. And then at midpoint, you have 180 pushing it down. And then this thing goes horizontal. And then it goes vertically up. Okay. So we know that this is uh, 90 times 10 to power 3. This is minus 90 times 10 to power 3. Okay. So now looking back at the question, let's go back to the question. They did not give us where NN is. Okay. And it is not important at all. Why? Because anywhere between 0 to where the load is applied over here at 180 kilonewton. Right, regardless of the distance x, the shear force is always what? 90 times 10 to the power 3. So that's where, that is the reason why they did not tell us the distance. Only after we construct the shear force diagram, we say, hey, that's not important. So now we know that Vy is equal to 90 times 10 to the power 3 Newton. So coming back to this equation, what do we know? Now we already know our Vy. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to determine Izz. Izz now we don't know. Okay. So I'm going to determine Izz. And I remember showing you guys a method that I've developed. And I'm going to show you how quickly this can be determined. Okay. So I'm going to have this diagram. Right, and if ZZ, so ZZ is in the horizontal direction, so this is our width, and this over here is our depth. Okay, so I'm going to call this our flange, okay, and I'm going to divide this. This is our left web. This is our right web. I want you to be familiar, okay, with the name flange and web, okay? So I'm going to take my datum from the top or my reference datum from the top. 
So we're going to go to section. Okay, so I'm determining centroid now. Okay. So we have our flange. And we have our, our left web. And we have our right web. Okay. So from here. Okay, so we can have our width. And depth which is equal to our area. So the width is 160. The depth is 20. And then the the web, the width is 20. Okay, the width is 20. And then the depth is 100 minus by 20 is 80. Okay. So pardon me, this is a hundred. Okay. So if you check in the diagram over here, it's equal to a hundred. Okay. So likewise, the width is 20 and 80. So this will be, I'll be quick. Okay. So 20, if I can find my calculator. Oh no. Uh, I need to find my calculator. Found it. Okay. So we have 160, 3200, uh, 20 multiplied by 80, 1600, 1600. And then when you sum all of them, it's 320 plus 1600 plus 1600, because 6400. Next, we determine our Y bar in the visual section centroid small y bar so this is equal to 20 divided by 2 which is got 10 because the datum is at the top this is 20 plus by 80 divided by 2 okay so 80 divided by 2 plus by 20 60 so likewise this will be equal to 60 and then next we can determine our uh, a y bar so 320 multiplied by 10 is equal to 32,000. Uh, 160 multiplied by 60, 96,000. So this is also 96,000. Okay, let me do it again. 3200 multiplied by 10, 160 multiplied by 60. Okay, so this will be equal to 3200 plus by 96. Oh, oh, no, 32123 plus a 96123 plus a 961230 is 224123. So we get our Y bar now. This will be equal to 224 minus by 64,000, 6400. So 224123 divided by 6400. So this will be equal to 35 millimeters. From the top. Okay, then we find our Y bar R I Z Z of our flange. So this will be equal to 160 20 cube divided by 12 plus by 3200 as i say i'm not thinking now okay if you use my approach it's just copying the numbers on the table okay so this is going to 160 times 20 power 3 divided by 12 plus by 3200 times by 35 minus 10 squared it's equal to 2.10 uh, 67 times 10 to power 6 millimeter power 4 let me do it again. 20 power 3 divided by 12 plus 320 times by 35 minus 10. Close bracket. Squared is equal to, yep, I get the same one. 2.160. So next, I'm going to find IZZ. Just the web, regardless whether it's a right or left, it's going to be the same. Okay, so IZZ for web. The width is equal to 20, 80 cube over 12. Plus by 1600. Trying to write too fast. 
0.600 multiplied by 35 minus by 60 squared. Okay. So 20 multiplied by 80 by 3 divided by 12 times 160 times by 35 minus 60 close bracket squared. It's going to 1.853. Times 10 to the power 6 millimeter to the 4. Let me do it again. 20 times by 80 power 3 divided by 12 plus 160 times by 35 minus 60 close bracket squared is equal to 1.853. So therefore, IZZ is equal to 2.1067 times 10 to the power 6 plus by twice because you have left and right 1.853. Times 10 to power 6. So 2.10, power 6 plus 2 times 1.853 power 6 is going to 5.813. Okay. 